Well, hey guys, this is Annie Noodle, and this is the absolute disaster that I'm trying to work in right now while I renovate. And so, if you have been around my channel for a while, or have been on a live stream that I have visited, I haven't done my own, I've just been all over everybody else's the last couple weeks, I've been talking about how I wanted to get the Kiritake Ganzai Tambi <laughs> Kiritake Ganzai Tambi Art Nouveau Kit. And I have not done that because I am on a no-buy. But last year, before I was on a no-buy, I got mm, that bad boy right there. He's very big. Yeah, he's very... So let's do a spread in my sketchbook with it. So this is my first Kuretake set like this. I have not had any experience with these paints whatsoever. Um, I, of course, have watched a lot of videos uh, where people review these. And, you know, they're gorgeous. They look like little candies. Of course I want them. Uh, <laughs> I mean... I really just left that footage in because like it's still like I look at it and I'm like wow they're so gorgeous just in the pan how does anybody use these they're pretty I don't want to touch them uh so I did do some swatching but it was very atypical swatching where I just went bloop 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 on a doodle page in my sketchbook this is my etcher sketchbook it is the same sketchbook that I used through the whole video so uh yeah I find it very helpful if you're actually going to bother trying to do swatches to do swatches and on the same kind of paper you're going to make arts on just, you know, so that you are comparing apples to apples. So this dragon doodle page is actually really odd for me. I don't ever doodle like this. Like when I doodle, it's way more sketchy looking rather than like solid lines. And I, um, if you watch Peter Draws, I saw him... <laughs> I don't know if it was a newer video or an older video because sometimes I just binge watch Peter Draws videos because they're fun. And I, something he was doing made me want to doodle this and so I doodled and uh, it was fun. And yeah, but it's not my usual thing. And so like it's the only page in like any of my sketchbooks that's like this. So, <laughs> But now it's all pretty and rainbow colored too. And as per usual, I did not leave the entire swatching process in here because I just don't like to do that because I figure if you guys want to watch swatching of a product that's been around for years already, there's lots and lots of channels that already do that. And uh, yeah, I figure you might want to come here and watch me make things that you haven't seen before, at least a little bit, you know, as much as any art channel is different than any other art channel. Uh, so my first impressions of these paints, I will say they are very pretty and they're very vibrant colors and I should have realized this more while I was doing these swatches, but they reactivate pretty easily on the paper and they're not that easy to layer, which I, um have epic battles with later on. <laughs> I was not prepared. I probably should have actually watched other people's videos and been like, hey, how about I take that into account? But what fun would that be? Like, how am I supposed to learn if I just watch other people do things instead of just massively struggling through it myself? <laughs> I feel like I might have said that exact same thing on a different video already. And I wouldn't be surprised if that were the case because <laughs> I think it's one of my base personality traits. Oh, and those sparkly colors. Ooh, I really like them. They're very sparkly. <laughs> so on to painting um, actual things and not just blobs of color. Although I guess this is still just a blob of color. But let's let's not get too philosophical. So I'm painting a bee here. <laughs> <laughs> and if you wonder, I think I got all of the reference photos that I used to do these little sketches from the Facebook group 
free photo references for artists, which I talk about like in almost every video. So I'm sure you've heard about it. And I really wanted to do, I didn't intentionally pick things that made me think of spring and warmer weather, but that is what happened because I am very much ready for spring and warmer weather. Um, I, <laughs> it's actually like finally nice out, like it's well above freezing and the sun is out and I really want to be outside right now, but I also really want to get this video done because I haven't gotten a video out in a while and I really, uh, it, it just starts to like build up pressure in my head that I, I really want to get this done. Uh, oh, and so these bee wings here, I really liked how they turned out and I didn't think I was going to, but... They, I don't know, they looked kind of soft, but distinct. Uh, yep, that totally makes sense. So, <laughs> um, I, those flowers gave me a lot of trouble. Um, and it is the same two things that are going to keep coming up over and over again. I had trouble layering these paints and I had trouble getting dark colors, like dark values with these paints. And... I am going to say it's 100% my fault because honestly the paints, there's nothing wrong with paint so it's clearly just user error which I'm fine with. I'm always fine with it just being user error. So if you look right now at the black on the bee, you can see that it is shiny and it's not wet. It's um, That's one of the things that these paints do if you put them on very thickly. they get shiny and that is a, an issue that I knew was a problem but I just wasn't paying attention and so now there's a shiny spot on my bee it's not the end of the world it's a sketchbook so I'm gonna be calm <laughs> um this is one of my I might have to redo this one um like as a more finished piece because I really like this one it's the photo was a chicken sitting on a whole bunch of like leafy greens that it was eating, like on this uh, jack-o'-lantern that, that obviously seen better days. It's just, it's so cute. I love it. It is, yeah, 100% the kind of thing I like to paint. Also, I am jumping all around. Like you're seeing this in the order that I painted it, so it might not make sense. Ooh, my cat says hi. Well, I apologize if she cat her walls and you can hear it, but sometimes she's just very talkative and I can't do anything about it. <laughs> I like to call it, she likes to go in the basement and just meow really loud for a long time. And I just, I think of it, that's like she goes downstairs to talk to the basement for some reason. I Maybe she thinks it gets lonely. I don't know. Uh, so, <laughs> all right, here is one of many layers that I am putting on this part of the flower and I'm using like a negative painting technique which is like one of my favorite ways to paint. I love defining items in the foreground by painting the background and that's negative painting so I think it's really fun. And so I put a layer on and then I put another layer on and then I put another layer on and like eventually I'm just like well that's the color this is gonna stay. <laughs> and I don't think I ever really got it to a point where I felt happy with how dark this these parts of the flower got like I felt like it should be more because it was a bright sunlit day in the photo and like clearly the I got the darks on the bee very black but I didn't didn't want to go black on the flowers anyways yeah so then I'm just putting in some like uh reflected shadowy parts underneath um and it's fun to try to keep your shadows interesting by, you don't want to put a lot of details in your shadows because it's distracting. Like, a, presumably the thing that you are painting that you want to draw attention to is in the light. That's how most things are. But also just like human brains really like it when things in the shadow kind of form like a cohesive unit. So you don't want to put a lot of detail in the shadow and... Yeah, I'm not necessarily the best at obeying that rule of art. So, <laughs> moving on, here we have two adorable otters sitting on like a tangle of roots. It's so cool. And I honestly just wanted to paint them because the tangle of roots is really neat. 
and also because otters are cool. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, again, ran into the same problems with these guys. It was hard for me to get dark darks and keep them dark. Like, I <laughs> went over the shadows in these so many times. Especially the... These especially, because the reason I picked this particular picture of them is that it had such like a nice angle of sunlight coming from the right and going across them and the tangle of roots that they're sitting on. And I really like dramatic lighting in my sketches and the pieces that I do. I like dramatic lighting. And yeah, it's hard to get dramatic lighting with these. <laughs> like... I really had a hard time getting dark shadows. Like I said, I'll stop saying it now. But so, yeah, but you can watch how much lighter these um, paints dry to. It's like you can watch like, wow, like watching it now. I'm like, wow, that is really quickly color shifting as it dries. Um, And here you can kind of see I'm already starting to fail at keeping things simple in the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> so in other news uh as you saw i am still renovating my house on wednesday i have people coming over to install flooring which is why everything is piled into my studio right now i am ripping out floors and i am painting walls and i am yeah i am exhausted <laughs> but i'm having a lot of fun so i'm also like Doing this thing where I'm realizing that, like, I'm old. <laughs> so I am, like, hurting myself accidentally as I'm, like, ripping out my flooring and yada yada. And it's not, it's not good. And people like to be like, oh, Annie, you're not that old. And I'm like, no, look, I need to tell myself this because otherwise I'm going to keep hurting myself because I keep doing things that my body is telling me. I'm too old to do like my body is like you shouldn't be ripping this up like that and I'm like no I can do it and then I limp for three days and yeah it's okay to tell yourself that you have to take it down a notch like <laughs> I'm not saying I'm old and that's bad I'm just saying I'm old and maybe I should calm down a little bit um so right there you can kind of see that I'm already starting to put in that like purple kind of almost horizontal line across the tree root. And that's the direction that the sun was shining in. It's so cool. <laughs> and now I'm working on the otter's little face. And because I wanted to keep the otter's face a little bit pulled forward from the rest of its body, I am making his face a little bit redder than the more like purpley cooler body that is to the left so I've kind of decided that I want to start doing a lot more botanical illustrations and like by that I mean very um highly detailed very rendered very carefully constructed illustrations of probably a lot of plants and animals probably too eventually but I'll probably just start with plants and I don't really know very much um about that yet I've been doing a lot of research but I am still very much in the learning phase and so I figured I would bring you guys with me as I figure out how to do botanical illustration uh so you might start seeing videos pop up on my channel that are probably going to be longer and be a little bit more um I don't want to say cohesive because it makes it sound like the rest of my videos are a hot mess but more linear uh that's what I want to say they're going to be a little bit more linear um and probably less edited I will probably just be going through and kind of cutting out some chunks but mostly I will be just talking I won't be doing voiceovers I'll just be chatting as I'm going through and telling you about what I'm doing and the reason that I'm doing this is because there's a slight possibility that I'm going to be involved in a project that involves me doing botanical illustrations and that's awesome 
And so it's really like, it's kind of sparked my interest in a thing that is really not far outside of my wheelhouse anyways. So, uh, yeah, if that sounds interesting to you, I'd love it if you commented that you think botanical illustrations are cool and you'd love to see me doing them. I have been checking out YouTube and there's not a lot of people that actually do botanical illustrations on YouTube, like not the highly, there's a lot of people who paint botanicals, but not like scientific illustrations. Do you know what I mean? So that's the kind of, um, that's kind of the style that I want to try to go for. And so yeah, you might see something of those coming up soon. And those would be like, in addition to like whatever else I'm doing with my my usual semi-weekly-ish video. Oh, so here I want to talk about how important it is to use your brush strokes to follow the shape that you're painting. And that doesn't just mean the direction of fur, because you can't see the fur that I'm painting here. You can, however, see that I'm painting a spherical belly shape, right? So, and just like when I switch over to the other otter's neck, I am moving along the shape of the neck to kind of give, to use my brush strokes to give the shape the right form. And even though you don't always think that you can see those brush strokes, your brain recognizes those shapes are there still. Do you know what I'm saying here? <laughs> and like now you can clearly see the brush strokes as I'm doing a little bit more of a dry brush thing on the on the back of this otter and so clearly I want to follow the shape of the body and the direction of the hair because if you go against the direction of the hair it's going to look really weird when it's done like even though you might not consciously know the direction that a animal's hair goes you still kind of know like you've seen enough animals so that you can just be like oh that doesn't seem right and I can't figure out why and I know it adds another layer of things that you have to think about while you're painting, right? And that's okay. You don't have to learn to think about all of the things at once. Like, you don't have to think about color and value and shape and, you know, um, aerial perspective and all of the things that eventually you just... If you just learn one thing at a time, when you've been learning those things for years you will be painting and realize that your brain is processing all that stuff all at once and you're only kind of thinking about it. Like it isn't overwhelming anymore. You know what I mean? So don't don't get overwhelmed. Just keep keep learning stuff. Because <laughs> uh, I didn't even think about any of that. I just, when I was doing my um, playback and doing my editing, I was like, oh, yeah, I should talk about that. You know, because <laughs> it's one of those things that you don't, you get used to doing it and then you stop thinking about it and then you realize that, you know, not everybody's got that experience yet. So, and so now we are moving on to the pumpkin and I really, <laughs> I had fun painting this. It was so cute and uh, I really love oranges and reds and... Yeah, these are closer to gouache than a lot of other watercolors are, which I have heard about them before, so I was mentally prepared for that. And so I felt like even though I didn't leave a lot of space for the greens over the oranges, like, I don't think it ended up looking bad. Like, I think the greens could cover the oranges well enough for me in this instance and uh <laughs> oh here's something I left in just for you guys uh I made a giant hot mess out of this chicken so I I was like oh I'll just blob some uh kind of bluey purpley colors on for the shadows of this chicken which is fine and then I'm gonna go in with a tissue paper and kind of gently blot it out and then uh yeah uh, I realized that I made a giant mess of it. <laughs> and so then I just blotted it all out. <laughs> and then I started over again. And, uh, yeah, guys, it's okay to do that. <laughs> 
So here I am starting over again. <laughs> this time I'm a little more careful with the tissue. Because <laughs> it turns out when you want to carefully blot out shapes with a tissue, you need to make sure that you're holding the tissue so it's not making weird jagged shapes on your paper. Otherwise it looks funny. <laughs> So this looks a lot better than it did. Um, yeah, it's starting to look a little weird the last time. So yeah, please feel free to make mistakes and start over because I do that all the time. Oh, and right there, I was checking to see if the um, chicken had dried. Uh, if you touch your paper with the back of your hand and it feels cold, then it means that it's probably not fully dry yet. Uh, and then I touched the paper and it felt cold and it wasn't fully dry. And I was like, yeah, that's close enough. So, <laughs> but yeah, normally you don't really want to paint over things unless they're fully dry because watercolor lifts very easily and it is easy to get accidental cauliflowering and other weird stuff happens. You, it, yeah, don't paint on damp watercolor unless you're doing it intentionally. It's a good thing to keep in mind. So here you can see I am painting over that orange with the green and it looks just fine honestly like this green is pretty opaque I think. Um, and if I had done real swatches I would probably be able to tell you better if it was or not but meh it looks okay so uh, yeah. <laughs> and I I really love these pans. I love that they come out of the box and you can just hold them like this. Like, this is like my favorite thing about these paints. These giant pans you can just hold in your hand. And yeah, I love that. I love that you can just take out a few colors. Yeah, super fun. Uh, especially because the box that they come in is so ginormous. It is really nice to be able to just pull out the color that colors that you want to use and leave the rest. And it helps you like kind of make a limited palette. Like if I was making a specific illustration, I could just like hold these pans together and be like, how do these colors look? So that's like a really fun thing to be able to do. And of course, it's fun that you can use gigantic brushes in these pans too. I did not do that just yet, but it's, you know, a thing that I'll probably think about doing someday. So I'm sure a lot of you guys have used these pants before and I would love to hear in the comments if you have used them and what you think of them because I'm always curious about what other people think about the paints that I am using. Um, yeah, so this is one of those very pinky reds and like I would love to be able to tell you which one it is but like that's like way across the room and if you saw the state of the room that I'm in right now like you know why I'm not gonna go over there and get it for you yeah but it I love there are some like situations where the fact that these paints lift so easily is just so nice so I would really love to do a lot more with these because I ugh, just the subtle colors in this chicken's face make me so happy and I'm sure I can get that with a lot of other paints too but I don't know, there's something about these paints that are just really fun, okay? Like, I <sighs> I wish I could have gotten a better value range, and I wish I had known more about them going in. Like, I wish it had been less of a struggle for me to understand how to use them. But I, I love them. I think they're super fun to play with. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll definitely be using them for a lot more stuff especially in my sketchbooks I don't know how light fast they are um I'll have to check into that because it's not something I worried about for you know right now I am just playing in my sketchbook and my sketchbook is not going to be exposed to the sunlight so here I'm going in with a very dark I don't think this is Viridian green but anyways going in with a dark green that actually stayed dark like this green actually stayed this dark and it almost like completely messed up my workflow because I'd gotten so used to none of these paints drying the color that I thought they were going to. And then this green was like, no, I'm this dark. What? <laughs> it's okay, though. 
Um, and I do blend this out. Like, I don't just leave it looking like big chunks of paint everywhere. I mean, you know, it's still big chunks of paint, but more subtle chunks of paint. I have a whole bunch of video ideas for, like, I swear, like, I have video ideas for, like, every week for, like, the next two years. Oh, by the way, guys, like, I think next week? No, it's the 31st. The 31st is my one year, and I am really excited. One year anniversary on YouTube. I should be a little more specific there. Um, I am so excited. I... I had no idea when I started this if I was going to like it or not, and I am really liking it. And I am not going to go into this a lot right now because I'm sure on the on the video that I actually put out that week, I'm going to want to talk about it a lot. But I can't believe it's been a year. Um, I have made so many good friends already, and I just love this community. You guys are awesome. Yeah. <laughs> all right, that's all I'm saying about it. Until later. Uh, so now we have started. Oh, dear. Is this an alligator or a crocodile? I always forget. I am a horrible, horrible, horrible person. Horrible. Yeah. And I love animals. And I absolutely forget how to tell the difference. Like, every single time. So, yeah. So, this crocodile, is, uh, he was, like, I think my favorite thing to paint. It's hard to pick, but... I really like painting lily pads, and these are just little simple shapes, and they were fun to paint, and he was fun to paint, and he just looked so happy and chubby, and, you know, he had good vibes. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, guys. Like, I'd love to hear what your favorite is out of these sketches, uh, and here you can see that I am making the lily pads that are in front of him a little bit more yellow because that helps things, pull things to the foreground, you know? I know I'm going to say the same things over and over again in my videos, but that's just how it is. Like, I don't want to be the person who assumes that you guys know everything and then, like, somebody's like, I don't understand why you're doing any of this. And I'm like, well... That's really fair. I probably should explain some of what I'm doing. And so now I'm going in and putting in shadows with a blue. Not, like, not super complicated, but, you know, I just wanted some shadows so that the lily pads looked like they were on the water and not floating in some weird space around the, hmm, crocagator. But that kind of sounds like a really fun painting, and now I really want to paint that. So, uh, yeah, if you guys are commenting, I'd love to hear if you want me to paint a crocagator floating in space with lots of cool floaty lily pads around it. And so, and then I'm just putting in like reeds and stuff. I really like the greens in this set. They were really fun to play with. Um, and I, in general, just like painting with greens, so... <laughs> And I really liked all of the subtle colors that showed up in this guy's face, like the kind of olivey greens and reds and browns and the kind of creamy colors. I mean, these paints are kind of a pain when you don't know what you're doing, but they are really pretty, I think. Uh, and so then, because I was sick of dealing with all of this, <laughs> I'm just being honest here, um... I busted out my pen and just put in some lines and put in some shadows with my pen. This is um, this is a, a Kakuno pen, and if you look closely, it has got a smiley face on the nib. <laughs> like all of all of my pens that I have that have nibs have faces on them because I am a child in an adult body. Uh, so I. Oh, and this has a platinum uh, sepia ink in it, so it's waterproof and brown, and I really like it. I like the platinum carbon, too, like the black, but I just, when I'm sketching with brown, it just, I don't know, it makes me happy to sketch with brown for some reason. <sighs> so here you see that I am falling prey once again to putting too much details into the shadows, because this whole side of this giant root ball thing 
is supposed to be in shadow, like pretty dark shadow. And I'm like, let's draw these little noodly doodlies in there. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm, <sighs> I'm a train wreck as an artist. No, it's fine though. <laughs> No, I had so much fun painting those. And, like, I didn't put any shadow underneath it. So, much like the Crocagator, this is just floating in space. <laughs> like, I don't... I don't know why I didn't put a shadow underneath it. But there you go. Um, And I think I start going into... I tried not to put too many details onto the otters with the ink pen. But, oh, yeah, I did put little whiskers in. So cute. Because their otters and their whiskers are the most adorable part of them. Oh, I mean, except for their little tiny feet. Okay, all of the parts of the otter are the most adorable part of the otter. Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> and oh, yeah, while I'm doing this, if you notice what I'm doing with my inking, I am following the contours also of the little... Um, lumps and things on the tree roots so yeah I accidentally made this otter look super cranky <laughs> it's fine though <laughs> but also for this otter and for the other otter you can see I decided to put in some little furry bits and I'm still making sure to follow like the shape of the body and the direction of the fur just to keep that um sense of volume and the shape going, you know. Um, I, I really like how my crocagator turned out, but I admit that I wish I'd taken the time with him and not used a pen because I think putting in these sharp lines... Oh, I found a cat hair in my nib. Uh, I think putting in these sharp lines, like, really kind of took away... Like, I really liked all the little subtle colors in his face, like I said. And then I put in all these lines, and I feel like it just took away all of the um, cool, subtle colors that I had gotten in his face. So, oh well. Lesson learned. Not a biggie. But, and I still, I mean, I like him. But, and I love drawing all of his little nubby bits on his head. And I think drawing his little teeth in was really super fun, too. So, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, this, like, is, like, my favorite part, um, drawing his little mouth. Anyways, so I don't know that I'm going to have time to get another video out this week, but I might try to do, like, something a little fast and crafty. I am actually teaching a couple classes this weekend at my churches. Like, we're having, like, an art camp for, like, our kids in our school. And so I get to teach a couple classes, and I'm really excited about it, but I'm realizing I probably should at least do the lessons that I'm going to teach at least once so I have some idea of how to tell other people how to do them. <laughs> so you guys might see me pop up again this week with like a very chill, crafty sort of thing. And that's it. We're done. So here is what the sketchbook spread looks like. I like all of these... Um, <laughs> My crocagator looks like decorated. <laughs> like, um, and then you can see the shininess on the bee, which I really like how those flowers turned out. Uh, yeah, this was super fun. I think that as a spread as a whole, it looks a little empty. So I'll probably add some more stuff into these pages. But yeah, uh, I will see you guys again soon. I appreciate you hanging out with me and I hope you like this video. Bye bye.